So the idea that I want to share with you today is about legacy. It's about legacy and this concept that the clock is ticking. And when this opportunity came my way, I really took it extremely seriously and I thought oh, I could talk about lots of different things. I could share lots of different uh, experiences and lessons with you guys, but I sort of thought to myself, do you know what? I'm going to imagine that it's one of those situations like in the Titanic where we're both on a little raft and only one of us can stay on the raft. And I'm like, you go, you go, but make sure that you tell everyone this. Because I thought to myself, if I'm going to come and stand here on the red dot, I want to share the one thing that means the most to me in, in the world, you know, and the one thing that I believe to be something that I can talk passionately about and that I can relay onto you so that you can take whatever it is that you extract from the next 16 and a half minutes and do something slightly differently with your time because the clock is ticking. So the first time I actually really felt legacy, it was strange, it's kind of like just now out there, like, you know, pacing up and down, quite nervous about coming out. It was at a uh, public speaking um, gig, if you will, um, where I was due to speak in front of 700 people. I just remember thinking to myself, I'm so nervous, my palms are sweating now, I'm starting to get a little bit hot, what if I get my words wrong? What if it doesn't do it justice? What if I completely forget what to say? And all these things were going through my head. And I just remember when it was time to stand up, I just remember standing up and walking to the position in which I was due to speak from. And I just remember it hit me. It just hit me in that moment and I just knew exactly what legacy was all about. Time is the currency of life. My friends, a limited amount we have to spend. Time is what it's all about. We're all here together right now. That's a special thing. We could be anywhere in the world. We could be doing anything on this day, but we're here together through choice because there's always a choice. And it's amazing how later on when we go home, we're going to be talking to our partner or we're going to talk to our friends or we're going to think about what we've learned today and all the things that we've seen and heard. And in that process, we're actually creating a mini cycle of legacy, legacy from this particular day. History, something that can never be denied, something that can never be taken away. Every single one of us has our own loop playing, our own personal legacy. Because here's the thing, and I want you to listen to this very, very carefully. I have to go there with this because everything has an opposite and everything is about contrast. You need to know darkness to appreciate light. You need to know cold to appreciate warm. And in order to really give you everything I can today, I've got to kind of go there with the whole death thing in order to really appreciate life. And so I'm going to say it and you're going to listen very carefully. Each and every one of us is going to die two times. Each and every one of us is going to die two times. The first time will be when our physical body no longer serves us. And we know that though, right? The second time, which is the bit that we will probably, I don't know, I mean, who knows? That's the great thing about it, I suppose. But let's just say that we probably won't see what happens next. But the second time that we die is the very, very final time that somebody ever says your name, right? You know your name that you've been writing your whole life on a piece of paper at school, on your piece of clothing, on your social media account, you know, your name that lights you up when you hear someone say it to you. It's one of our most favorite words in the whole wide world, by the way, our own name. But the last time somebody says that and is actually thinking and referring to you as a human being is the last time. That's it. And the space in between the first time, the physical body, and the second time, that's legacy. And what we do with our words, what we say, what we do with our time and the work that we put in, and our reasons why we do it, the three W's, words, work and why will actually 
shape what our legacy really is. And the cool thing about it is that as we do that, as a human being living on this earth, you get to experience three really cool things, if you get it right. Happiness, fulfillment, and love. So it's kind of a win-win situation. You feel good while you do it, and you know that should you stick to your truth, and you operate and choose and apply the right attitude in every single moment, or as many moments as you can, because we all have off moments, course as long as you just do your best you're creating that legacy as well so my name is Tommy Gentleman I'm here today to talk to you about legacy and this here is all about you and what you do next like I said it's really important that I share what I believe to be my most important and purposeful point of view with everything that I could possibly bring to the table today. I help people to feel good. I help people to live healthy and happy lives. It's something that I do every day. I'm used to looking into the whites of people's eyes and listening and being able to understand and empathize and then help, help with one very important thing. It's a journey. It's a journey from A, which is where you are at right now, to B. And whatever B is, that's where you would like to be. Every single one of us has an idea, every single one of us has, at the moment, a concept or an awareness of a journey from A to B. You're trying to do something, whether it's in your health, whether it's in your relationships, whether it's in your career, we're all doing something. And there's a big problem, ladies and gents, on the journey from A to B, because if it were that easy, we'd all be swimmingly happy all of the time there would not be so much of a problem with mental health. We would not find that life's tough and it's hard and sometimes we'd want, we just want to give up. Everyone feels that, we've all got a spectrum of emotions. And do you know what the friction is in between A and B? The friction is that we feel two things. One, fear. And two, pain. And so I'm going to share today a message that will allow you to look fear and pain in the eyes and actually notice that inside the eye of fear and pain is actually opportunity. Opportunity for strength and opportunity for purpose. The interesting thing happens before we even go on that journey though. I like to think of it as like the Frodo approach. Yeah, you know Frodo from Lord of the Rings? I mean you just got to watch that first, that first scene where he leaves the Shire and it's all like happy and he's like, you know, he's got his lunch over his shoulder and he's got his friends with him and he's going out there and he's going to go on an adventure. And everything's fine because he hasn't encountered a problem yet. He hasn't hit that fear, he hasn't hit that pain, so it's all good. Now each one of us goes through that Frodo moment, just so happens my Frodo moment was actually going to New Zealand, which is where they filmed the, the whole Lord of the Rings series, so yeah, it means a lot in terms of that uh, metaphor for me, but I went to New Zealand um, at the age of 19. I wanted to go and explore, I wanted to go and see the world, my auntie owned a gym, and so I thought, well hey, I've got this opportunity to go and find out about myself, I was 19, I didn't really know anything about like adulthood, my mother looks after me, even to this day, extremely well. Uh, she dressed me, she didn't really. Um, dressed myself. Uh, but she, she came with me. You see, this is, this is exactly the thing. She came with me. She was going to stay for, for like three weeks, and then she was going to leave. And I was going to stay for three months. I was going to come home just before Christmas, right? Anyway, I get there, and I see all this like, fantastic culture, and I see these big opportunities to learn and grow. And there was this one moment where my mum and I, she was due to go to the airport, she was going off, it had been her three weeks, she was going to leave me there with her sister for a couple more months. And we looked at each other, and she started crying, and she said, you're not coming home, are you? And I said, and I wanted to say, of course, mum, of course I am. Looking into my mum's eyes, she's crying in my face. My mum, you know, like, you like, she's crying, she's upset, and it's because of me. And I just went, no, I'm not. There's too much opportunity here for me, Mum. I'm going to stay. I ended up staying for about 18 months. 
I worked in this amazing gym in New Zealand. I got a lot of experience. I met some amazing people. And I started to formulate this idea of how I could do what I want to do, which was what I thought at the time was live my legacy of helping people to be healthy and happy. And I had all these ideas. I was going to go home and start a business. But I wanted to stay in New Zealand for a little bit longer. I put my application in for my visa to get it extended. And it came back and it got declined. And I was like, well, this wasn't in the script. I was supposed to stay here. I was supposed to do more. I was like, okay, I'm going to have to go home. Back to, back to sunny Andover in Hampshire. Population roughly 15, I don't know. <laughs> Shout out to Andover. And so I went, I, I had this thing. I was like, right, okay, I'm going to have to reprogram my head here. Everything about my head is saying I want to stay here. This is a big problem, etc. And then I realized there was one really important reason to go home. My younger brother was, at the time, like 13. And he was just starting to get into that age, you know, when you're a teenager, it starts getting a little bit complicated. I thought he's probably going to want to have his big brother around to help uh, see him through that process. And I was really excited about coming home, spending that time with him, and just seeing him grow up into a man. Just so happens, when I got back, that was literally already happening. I'm like, what are they? He's like, well, these are my shoes. I'm like, well, where did you get them? I bought them myself. Oh, did you now? You know, he's turning into his own person. He's growing up, and I'm like, this is exactly where I'm supposed to be right now. We had all weather over just over a month from the moment I got back up until sort of mid-March. We had sun, we had snow, snowball fights. You know, it was great being back with the family back with my little bro, back with Jamie, and just having fun and just thinking, yeah, I'm cool with this. I'm happy with this. This is good. And there was one particular Saturday where I opened my eyes after having a night out the night before, and I was a bit, you know, oh, it was sunny. Oh. I could hear my dad and my brother arguing, and they're going, oh, dad, get up. He's going, dad, get up. You've got to take me to football. My dad's going, yeah, we've got ages. And I'm like, oh, listen to those knuckleheads. I'm going back to sleep. And I'm like, no, I'm going to go and watch him play football today, right? So I go and watch him play football. They win 1-0. He scores an absolute screamer of a goal. It's 1-0. He's happy. I'm happy. Uh, I said to him before the game, I was like, look, you're the captain, buddy. But I don't want you to just be shouting at your mates today. I want you to talk proactively. I want you to share productive things with, like, okay, guys, let's try and move the ball quicker. Let's try and do this. Let's try and do that. And bless him, 13. And he's trying to do that on the pitch. And it was just awesome. It was just awesome to see. We both went home and he had a friend round and I was in my, my room at the time at home with my parents, both living there. And I was listening to some music and I was getting ready to go out and uh, he comes into my room and, and I'm like, hey, how you doing? He's like, yeah, good. And there was like this weird thing and he goes back out again and I was sat there and I was thinking, oh, something's weird about this. So I followed him back into his room and he was like playing on the Xbox, had his like headset on. You know, like, really cool, and he's 13, he, after all, you know, he's got the internet now. He's there and he's playing that, and I just sort of stood in front of the TV, and he's like, get out of the way, and I was like, hang on. Well done today. I said, well done today. You did great. And I turned around, and I walked, and as I walked through the doorway, something stopped me and went, just say it, you idiot. Don't know what it was. I turned around, I went back up to him, I ruffled his hair, and I said, I'm proud of you today. And those were the last words that I ever said to my brother. Because that night, he passed away from a heart defect that nobody knew he had, that was not possible to detect. And everything, everything came crashing down, and I didn't want to do anything ever again. So my, this is my, my little bro. This is, this is the worst thing that could ever happen. And it's here and it's my reality now. And so all of a sudden, this guy that's going to live this legacy of helping people to feel good. And I'm like, this is the last thing that I want to do. I just want to curl up into a ball. I don't want to speak to a person ever again. I just want to sit in the dark and cry. And I'm telling you this because this is my most difficult time. And I know, I just know that you have also had something like that. And it doesn't matter about what it was because there is a spectrum of human emotions that we all share. And I was scared and I was 
in pain. And I know that things have happened for you in your life that will cause you to feel the same thing. It doesn't matter what it is. It really doesn't. The feelings are real. And in those moments when it's so easy to give up and it's so easy to stop, you've absolutely got to keep going. Because you still have the choice. I never thought I'd be able to say these words, but I'm grateful for everything that's ever happened. Would I change it? Of course I would. You give me that opportunity, I will jump and I will take it. But I can't. Because time has already come and gone. It's in the past. Just like you, your thing, I'm sure you could. If you could wave a magic wand, you would, right? Yeah? But you can't. So all you can do is choose your attitude from that point on. Now the moment that I knew was when I stood there in front of 700 people at my brother's funeral and I was due to speak and address friends, family, members of the community and be the one that could do that. And I didn't have any problems at all. I actually enjoyed it. And the reason why I enjoyed it is because I accepted that there's nothing I can do but choose my attitude in this moment. And as I stood there, I realized what legacy really is. A 13-year-old boy, he had no agenda. He didn't want to do any, he, just, he was just a 13-year-old boy just living his life. Yet 700 people stood there, like crammed into every part of the church to be there. And that was legacy. And it's still going now. And I knew in that moment that my life was supposed to be connecting you to yours. Because I knew if I can do this, I can talk anywhere. And this moment right now is something that I've thought about for a long time. Specifically this one, yes, but also many more like this, where I get to share that with you because that's all I can do with that. What's the alternative? We can pick each other up. We can share our stories. We can share our ideas. That's why this is such a fantastic platform. So whatever you do, recognize the importance of your work, your words, and your why. Every time you feel fear, every time you feel pain, know that inside that fear is strength, and inside that pain is purpose. And when you look into the eyes of that feeling, you can extract those powerful attributes, and you can bolt them on to your already amazing personality. Because here's the thing, you are an amazing person, and guess what? The person that you see in the mirror every day, the person that sometimes you're a little bit too hard on, is the only person that you're ever going to be. And there will never be anybody ever, ever, in the history of mankind that is you. There never has been, and there never will be. That's special. And we're all given a certain amount of time. We don't know how much, but we're all given a certain amount of time. We've got to do everything that we can to be happy, fulfilled, and loved, and to share happiness, fulfillment, and love. So I urge and invite you to take these words, take one thing, take two things, take whatever you can, to live with more love, more courage in your heart, and to go and do the things that you already do, and work with creative freedom, not to care about opinions of other people, and just go and do it because you believe in it and you love it. To speak your words, don't die with things that you want to say to people that mean so much to you. There's one thing you do after this, text someone, tell them something. I was lucky, I was very lucky. We don't know when that's gonna happen. And then finally, remember your reason why. Remember the, the reason why you do the things that you do whenever it gets tough, just remind yourself of that. I'm gonna share one thing with you. I like to write sonnets. I'm gonna say this sonnet, I'm gonna try and remember it off the top of my head. And then after that, I'm done. Legacy is what's left when you're gone. 
when they mourn your death, reflect and move on. Come, feel this today. Don't leave it too long. Every second counts. It's time that you shone. Time is the art that sculpts our creation. It's time that you apply a deep appreciation. Birds, bees, DNA and genetics, your words, your deeds, what you say and phonetics. Your attitude is reflected in life. Don't just exist, step up and live it. Life is a test, you know this, you're in it. But live as your best, and don't waste a minute. I've shared my legacy, you've heard my voice. And what you do next is a matter of choice. Thank you, ladies and gents. Thank you.